Hi, my name's Mary. I'm a scientist and I'm excited to talk to you today about my research. I'm what's called a computational biologist. Biologist because I study the way organisms work and computational because I do all of my work on a computer. I'll tell you more about that later. First, let's jump into the biology. I study a process that happens in all organisms. It's actually happening inside your body right now. You are made up of trillions of tiny building blocks called cells. Yes, actually trillions, I had to check that. Each of these cells is a factory that's constantly making complex molecules called proteins. These proteins are like the protein found in many of the foods you eat. Proteins perform most of the work in your cells and are required for the structure, function, and regulation of your body. There are many different types of proteins, each with a distinct role. For example, some proteins help transport other molecules across the cell. Some are enzymes that help form new molecules or break down old molecules. And some are antibodies that help defend against viruses or other foreign invaders. Without proteins, we couldn't exist. But how are proteins made? Each protein is built of a chain of amino acids. Amino acids are basically protein ingredients. They get linked together in a specific order following a recipe. That recipe comes in the form of something you may have heard of, mRNA, which is short for messenger RNA because it encodes the message that will get read into a protein. Okay, so we have amino acid ingredients that get added together following an mRNA recipe. The last thing we need is a way to actually read this recipe. A molecular machine called the ribosome does that job. The ribosome reads the mRNA recipe and grabs the right amino acids. So I like to think of the ribosome as a chef, following an mRNA recipe that tells it which amino acid ingredients to add to make a protein. Here's the trick. The mRNA recipe is written in a language only the ribosome can read. It's just a list of amino acids, but it's written in a code. Each three-letter word in this code tells the ribosome which amino acid to add next. The ribosome starts with the first three letters. After adding the right amino acid, it moves to the next three letters. The ribosome keeps moving in steps of three along the mRNA and adding amino acids until the whole protein is made. This process of decoding the mRNA to make a protein is called translation. What I've just explained is how proteins are usually made. It's what you'd find in a biology textbook and what you'll learn in a biology class. In most cases, this is exactly how protein translation works, but there are exceptions. I study those exceptions to try to understand where and why they happen. I'm interested in finding cases where the ribosome doesn't do what it's normally supposed to do. It breaks the rules. One of these cases is in coronavirus. Coronavirus carries mRNA recipes for its own proteins. This is actually part of the real coronavirus mRNA sequence. I got it from a website where all the known mRNA sequences are published. You can go there too. This coronavirus mRNA gets read and translated by the ribosome, just like our mRNAs do. While reading the coronavirus mRNA, the ribosome gets to a complicated part of the recipe and it slips backwards. It ends up reading one letter twice. This changes the whole rest of the recipe the ribosome reads. The words are all shifted back one letter, so the ribosome makes an entirely different protein than it would have if it followed the original recipe. It turns out this is crucial for coronavirus to make its proteins and spread. My research project is to look for more cases like this one. It turns out this doesn't just happen in viruses. It happens in bacteria and even in you. To do this, I need to look through thousands and thousands of mRNA recipes to see if the ribosome does anything weird. Reading all those mRNA recipes would be the equivalent of reading a book 10 times the length of the entire Harry Potter series in a foreign language and trying to catch a single typo. And that would just be for humans. Searching for examples in bacteria and other organisms would require even more reading. So to make this possible, I write code to do the search for me. I actually do all of my work on a computer. This is what I meant at the beginning when I said I was a computational biologist. 
When you picture a biologist, you probably imagine someone in a lab coat looking through a microscope. Many biologists do in fact wear lab coats and run experiments on cells and animals. These biologists are the ones collecting the data that make what I do possible. Computational biologists do our work using a computer rather than working with cells or animals directly. We build models and software to analyze biological data and help other scientists do the same. I'm actually sitting in my lab at my computer right now. This is where I do most of my work. I spend my time writing code to explore biological data and search for the events I was telling you about. I'm constantly making this code work better so that I can make new discoveries about translation. Let me give you a peek into my workspace. This is the lab. We have a lot of our meetings in this space. We also have a lot of games, Nerf guns, and other toys for when we want to take a break, and a giant beanbag chair. Then we have our offices on this side. Each of us has our own space where we do most of our work. This is my office. I have a nice view of the volleyball court outside, and I spend most of my time coding here. Here's a look at my computer screen on an average day. I usually have a virtual notebook, which you can see on the right. This is where I test out short bits of code, load data, and make plots to see if my method is working. I also have a window where I can run my code on whole genomes rather than just on test data sets. You can see that on the left. When I generate a result or find something cool, I keep track of it by writing a summary. I use a different kind of code to write it up and format the summary paper. And then there's the place I actually write most of my code for the method I'm building. Here's a look at that. I hope you enjoyed getting a look at a different kind of biology and learning a bit about my research. Thanks for watching.